Thankfully, there are many smart candidates in the Republican field running to put an end to Biden's chaos. Vivek Ramaswamy, he is one of them, and he joins us now. Welcome, Vivek. It's good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing well. You know, you have an ambitious plan. I already know how you feel about Biden, so let's let's put that aside. You have an ambitious yeah. plan. You want to raise the voting age to 25 with a few exceptions, serving in the military, being a first responder, passing a test, the same one an immigrant would pass. But that would mean changing the Constitution, the 26th Amendment. That's a tall order. How would you do that? Yeah, so I'm here in Iowa on the campaign trail. Last night at a big speech here, I unveiled my support for a constitutional amendment whose goal is to revive civic duty in this country, Kaylee. That's something that the next generation lacks. 16% of Gen Z, less than that, said that they're proud to be American. And in fact, hmm. we have a 25% recruitment deficit in the military. I think we have to think big. And so what I'm saying is that constitutional amendment would raise the voting age, yes, to 25, but still say you can absolutely vote at the age of 18 if you either serve the country, either in military, police, or some first responder role for six months, or at the very least, pass the same civics test about the Constitution that every immigrant has to pass in order to become a voting citizen. And I will stand by and wait for why we should say that an 18-year-old should not know some basic facts about the Constitution before voting. But I think we're going to have to be ambitious to revive our national identity and actually pass on a country to the next generation. That is what this campaign is all about, is reviving that missing national identity in our country. You know, Vivek, I agree with you on the national identity part, reviving that in our country. Politico, however, they were out with some reporting about your team, your campaign team. They said most of the team has not been for this. A campaign advisor who was granted anonymity to discuss internal conversations said you noted that there have been some vehement objections um, from some in the circle. You know, my curiosity is. How do you sell this to Gen Z? You know, Gen Z showed up in a pretty big way in the midterms. They're motivated by, on the abortion issue. How do you sell something like this? You know, I want to take away your right to vote until you're 25 unless you do these three things. So, look, I think that actually a funny thing happened after the speech last night. All of the people who are older tells me that Gen Z won't like it. What I see amongst young people in this country, Kaylee, is that they're hungry for a cause. They're hungry for purpose and identity. And if we can fill that with American civic identity, they actually responded surprisingly well to that. Now, those are young conservatives, of course, but I think it's true across this country that actually young people, if we can give them a sense of purpose and meaning, answer what it means to be an American, that's better than the woke poison that otherwise fills the void. And one of the things about my campaign, you're right, many donors actually advised me not to roll this out after Politico began reporting that I was going to yeah. give this speech. I was called Brown Mussolini on social media huh, by the left terrible. today. I'm going to put all that to one side. I think what it means to be a real leader is not just telling people what they want to hear all the time. I think too many politicians do that. This is something that I believe is the right thing for our country. Like Ronald Reagan, I believe in persuasion, and it's going to be one of the elements of reviving our national identity that this campaign is all about. Vivek, I, I want to get this in quickly. Um, there was some New York Post reporting out, um, and they, pro they reported that there was a document that was circulated among the Department of Homeland Security. It talked about pro-life moms as radicalization suspects. It was an internal memo on January 29th, 2021. Now, I want to point out DHS says this document was created before Biden came in, apparently by a contractor, and they did away with it and it was never an official product. But the reason I bring it up, even with those caveats, is we've seen the radical traditionalization of Catholics memo by the FBI targeting Catholics. We remember the DOJ ordeal, school parents that were painted as violent extremists as they stood up for their children. What is it about? And, and I want to point out this document allegedly created during the Trump years by a contractor. This speaks to me to a bigger problem, and it is the deep state. And it is to your point. You want to clean out yes. some of those civil servants that exist in the Trump administration, in the Biden administration, and throughout several administrations. Do you think that's what's going on here with the targeting of Christians? That's absolutely what's going on. We have a corrupt administrative police state that has become so politicized. You cannot reform that, Kaylee. And this is where I differ from President Trump or build on what he did. We have to go further and shut it down, starting with the FBI, which I've said I would shut down. These agencies that should not have existed or have become so corrupt, you cannot reform them top down. You actually have to shut it down. And I believe I'm on solid constitutional footing if I'm elected as the next president of the United States to actually do it. So I that's what I'm looking to do. I love that day one priority. That is fantastic. Vivek, thank you.
Joe Biden is facing many other hurdles besides the border going into 2024. Will Kane is a 